So, Carson, you're here to show us how we can all think a little more uh, green about our gardens. And, of course, because this is a long-standing tradition, your first tip is about poop. Yay! We get to talk about poo! But, <laughs> Tracy, today's poo looks a little different than what we've seen in the past. This is poo. This is pelleted poo. Huh. Whose poo is that? <laughs> This is chicken poo, and you'll be happy to know it doesn't even smell like poo this time. Organic fertilizers have come a <laughs> long way, and I think more and more homeowners today are starting to really embrace using organic fertilizers, especially around food. Tomatoes, vegetables, growing with organic just makes sense. But when it comes to the rest of the plants, we're stuck in a rut, and we got to change that. Now, synthetic fertilizers are the most popular because people always look at these numbers, and they think, wow, those numbers are really big. I'm getting more fertilizer for my, my plants. Those numbers, like in this case, the 20-20-20, just represents the percentage of the ingredient in the container. It doesn't mean that this is stronger than this. It just means there's a higher percentage of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus in this container, which can sometimes be good, but sometimes more expensive. Unfortunately, what we're starting to see is a buildup of synthetic fertilizers in our ponds, in our fresh waters, in our streams, in our water table. So we got to start going towards the organic. Things like organic rose food made from, you guessed it, chicken poop or even organic tree spikes. These are the types of things we have to start embracing. Look for organic labeling, things like Omri or OK Bio. That'll let you know that you're doing the right choice for your plants and for the environment at the same time. You know what, Carson, at the end of the day, whatever we use, in the end, it is going to show up somewhere, whether it's in our drinking water or our air, you know, so you're absolutely right. Like, we have to make sure that we're not putting more synthetic things out into the environment because we can't handle that uh, as human beings. So your next tip is about switching to batteries. But when you say batteries, you're being very specific about which batteries we should be using. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm so glad you mentioned into the air because we got to get away from fossil fuels, especially when it comes to outdoor yard care. I don't know what happened, but people started to really think that outdoor power tools needed to be gas powered to be more efficient. We're now starting to see studies that the average lawnmower in our area produces about 88 pounds of CO2 in the air per year. And we have over 1.7 million lawnmowers. That's a lot of CO2 when we can get away from that and start using batteries. Now, more and more carpenters have been using battery power tools for a long time. They made the change years ago because they wanted to get away from electric. These batteries have come a long way from what they used to look like. This was a chunky old battery from back in the day. This is the new Streamline slim battery, but the key is this battery, which powered my drill, also powers my chainsaw, my string trimmer. It doesn't make the tool any less strong. In fact, we know Batteries are much cleaner. They're charged using electricity, and we have lots of environmental-friendly ways of using electricity to charge our batteries. But, and here's the key, you need to find a battery platform that is recyclable. This particular one by Craftsman actually has a recycled program behind it. This whole battery can be recycled when you're done using it, which means this doesn't get thrown away. This gets recycled and turned into other items. Now, yes, not all of the elements in here can be recycled, but a majority of them can. That makes using battery-operated outdoor yard tools much better for the environment. We don't need fossil fuels. Let's find a better way around it. I think it's pretty exceptional when there are companies out there offering batteries that can be recycled. This is something we need to get behind. Now, your next tip uh, is the most important in my books. We should be doing more of this if we can. What's your last tip? We need to plant trees, Tracy, like never before. We've got to plant trees. Now, everybody assumes that I mean out in the forests or replant forestation where the trees have burnt down. But the truth is our urban tree canopy in our major cities is disappearing. We're losing our trees because homeowners are deciding to cut them down or they're taking large lots, dividing them in half 
and putting two houses in so the lot space is a lot less so you don't have room for trees. This is our first line of defense for fighting climate change. We know that trees clean the air that we breathe. We know that they take carbon dioxide out of the air. What you don't know is the roots of the trees also stop erosion when we're getting these heavy floods happening across our country and in city centers where there's huge downpours and the soil's eroding away. It's the roots of the trees that actually protect against that. In Canada, we lose a lot of trees per year from homeowners who decide, you know, this is messy. The leaves falling on the ground makes a mess. I don't want that mess. When the reality is, these leaves are Mother Nature's free fertilizer. One small tree, about 15 feet tall, the leaves from that tree, properly composted, is about $50 worth of free fertilizer, organic fertilizer that you can use in your garden and your space. So instead of deciding, I'm gonna cut down the tree, or I'm gonna remove the tree because I want more sun, or I don't want to mess in my swimming pool, Invest in an arborist to keep your tree happy. And if you don't have trees, now's the time. Even trees in flower pots help the environment. This is your frontline defense against climate change. All the gardeners out there know this. It's time we all step up and plant more trees. Oh, I love it. Sold. Plant a tree, everyone, and then hug it. Thank you, Carson. Great tips. <laughs> we appreciate that. Yeah, give it a 